everyone, and welcome to A New Direction. My name is Jay Izzo, and oh man, do we have a great show for you today. I say it every week, we have a great show. I am telling you, this is going to be a great, great show. Why? Oh, well, okay, so first of all, the guest is Lynn Guerin, right? And he is unbelievably fabulous because he walked with the coach. Yeah, I'm talking about John Wooden, the, the greatest college coach of all time. You can argue who's number two. You can't argue who's number one. And he, he, you know, he was great, not because he won 10 national championships, not because he had four undefeated seasons, not because he won so many games. You know why it made him great is because he was a great leader that inspired, influenced, and empowered other people. That's what made him great. And Lynn Guerin is with us today. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to teach us many of the lessons, as many as we can fit in. <laughs> because I'm going to just tell you right now, we, we, I have got 50 pages of notes. This is the most notes I've ever taken on any book on the show, right? And I can tell you right now that Lynn has, Lynn said no to doing this for an entire week. Okay. So he, <laughs> he said no to that. So we only going to get, a, you know, get a few minutes with him here, you know, the hour anyway. And so we're going to do that. But listen, before we do that, let's do what we do every week. And you know what, folks, you know, I talk, I always talk about, you know, where's your training, you know, but I'm going to talk about growth. You know, we have a saying in my house with my wife and I, and the saying is this, if you're not growing, you're dying because you know what, there's no such thing as staying the same or static. And you know, we have four areas in our lives that we need to actually monitor our growth physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And normally I would say, you know, how's your training going in those four areas? But what I want you to evaluate this week is I want to evaluate is how would you evaluate your growth on a scale of one to 10? One meaning I'm growing just maybe a smidge, 10 meaning, man, am I really growing? And in the area of the physical, here, here's what I want to do. And, and by the way, I want to just say something about the physical. I usually say things like, you know, are you eating right, getting enough exercise, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water. But I'm going to tell you something else. I talked to my best friend growing up, Russell, and he had a stint put in his heart. And he started changing his diet. He's drinking more water. He stopped drinking alcohol. And he's quitting smoking. And he's doing all these things to change. Do you know what? That's growth. I hate the fact that it was a stint in his heart that created that growth. But man, I listened to him, man, did he grow physically. So when you evaluate yourself on that scale of one to 10, right? I want you to think about that. How would you evaluate yourself in terms of your growth this past week, right? Whatever that number it is, is. I'm not trying to get you from a three to a 10. I just, I want you to get from a three to 3.5. If you're a one, great. We're going to get you to a two, right? That, that's, that's the point. It's, it's not a judgment zone, right? The numbers aren't judgment. The, nu the numbers are just an area to start from, okay? The second area is the mental area, right? And, you know, uh, Coach Wooden uh, was so, he had such an amazing mind. And Lynn will tell you up until his death, he, he memorized and knew things and he absorbed things because you always have to be learning. And that's the mental part of the game is, are you always learning? And it's not just learning. It's not just reading. Are you taking what you learn and applying it to your, your life, to your profession, to your relationships. So if you were to evaluate that piece in growth, what number would you give yourself in terms of learning and then applying it? How would you evaluate that growth? What would that number be? And then the third area is the emotional area, right? And, you know, I talk about the two areas that are really impacted here. The first is being able to control your emotions. Coach talks about self-control as being such an important part of of, of, of being a great leader and having success in your life. And, you know, the truth of the matter is self-control is something we don't talk a lot about in today's world, but the truth of the matter is self-control is so important and being able to control your emotions and being able to not only control them, but control them under pressure, control them under stress, control them under strain, control them when you're hungry, control them when you're tired, Right? That, that's, that's, that's growth. And then the second piece is because relationships are everything when it comes to actually solving problems, at least that's what coach says, is that how well are you able to really listen and communicate with other people? 
Do you understand their emotions? Do you understand what they feel? Can you, can you describe their feelings? Right, so how would, you, how would you evaluate your growth in that area emotionally, a scale one to 10? And then finally, there's the spiritual area, right? And I'm gonna talk about spiritual growth. And <laughs> I know that there's some of you out there that said, well, you know what, Jay, I'm not, I'm not religious, I'm not spiritual, I, I you know, and you know what, listen, Here's the deal. We all have faith in something. Whether you want to believe that or not, you have faith in something. You, 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 faith is the substance of things not seen, right? Things hoped for, right? If you're hoping to go on vacation this summer, guess what? That's faith, right? And, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, you believe in something because you will run to something, Right? that you feel is going to give you some sort of sense of relief or some sense of calm or some sense of peace in the midst of chaos, you will run to something. And the first thing that you run to, that is the thing that you, that you idolize. That's the thing that you believe in is going to give you comfort. So whatever that is for you, I want you to evaluate how well is that working for you and how well are you growing, right? And if, it, that, if that's God, how's that relationship going for you? If it's something else, how's that working for you, right? So you have four numbers. Those four numbers are the four areas. Those four numbers, like the legs of a chair, right? If the legs of the chair are uneven, it's bad on your posture. If the legs are too low, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know what? We can't eat at a table and be nutritious, right? So we want to bring them all up together and balance. And then what we want to do is we want to bring them up as high as we can go. And speaking of someone who has their chair at the right height, I'm telling you, his name is Lynn Guerin. He's a co-author and CEO of the John R. Wooden course and the president and head coach of his family-owned coaching training and performance development firm called Garen Marketing Services. For the past 20 years, Lynn has had unique privilege of partnering with, partnering with an American treasure, legendary USC, UCLA basketball coach, John Wooden, and the Wooden family. The book, Coach Him Way Up, captures Lynn's personal experiences in the conception and design development and delivery of the Wooden Way. Lynn received his BA in liberal arts and business and his MA in international studies from Western Michigan University. He was the first person in his family to graduate, by the way, and I read that in the book. He lives in um, California with his wife, Tracy. He has two sons and uh, two grandsons. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show and welcome to a new direction. Lynn Guerin, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, excited. I love your opening. Uh, what it says, what it suggests. What you challenge people to uh, to think about. It's, Thank you. It's a, it's a great way to kick off your show. Well, you know, I, I you know, thank you for saying that. Uh, you know, when we started doing this, it, it's something that I've done since the very beginning of the show. And you know, I've had people who've said, you know, it helps me understand, you know, where I'm at and <laughs> what I need to do to change. And so, you know, that that's what the show is about: new direction, right? Helping people find a new direction, and so if we can give people a way to do that. And speaking of a new direction, uh, this book, Coaching Way Up, uh, available bookstores everywhere, by the way. Um, uh, it's great. It's a great read. I highly recommend that you, you really pick up this book because it's great. And also there's an assessment. They've had the paper assessment, but uh, there is an assessment that you can go online and do as well. And uh, we'll talk about that too as, as well. Um, a lot of people, Lynn, don't know who John Wooden is. I mean... They may have heard of the name. If, if you're a sports fan, you more than likely have heard of the name, but we really don't know John Wooden. And I have this international audience, right? I mean, I have people from Singapore and uh, France, which is my number two downloaded company. Um, thank you, merci, everybody in France, and of course, Israel and all over the world. So help us understand who John Wooden is so that they get a perspective as we talk about him. Well, I think, Jay, probably uh, with the countries uh, you mentioned uh, and the uh, the global um, impact that basketball has, mm. uh, that's probably the best place to start because it's hard to even think about basketball or know anything about basketball without really knowing anything about Coach John Wooden. Mm -hmm. You said uh, Coach Wooden is really considered the greatest, uh, not just basketball coach of all time, but the greatest coach of all time. He was actually selected in three or four different uh, processes as the uh, coach of the uh, of the 20th century and uh, most of those polls are asking other coaches who the greatest coach of all time is and you alluded to it hey there's no debate on 
there's a lot of debate on who number two is, but there's no debate on number one. That coach or that quote comes best from uh, the coach at Duke, Coach Shesky. Uh, he uses that line quite often. Um, so, so Wooden was a, uh, a a gentleman that started, um, you know, in a small town in Indiana, the hotbed of basketball. Uh, basketball is a religion in Indiana, particularly at the high school level. He coached a number of years of uh, of high school basketball. Actually, first job in Dayton, Kentucky. Uh, went to South Bend, Indiana. Uh, went into the service. Came back. Coached at Indiana State uh, for a few years, and a couple of powerful stories connected to Indiana State and how he essentially helped to integrate uh, college basketball. And then he went on to coach the UCLA Bruins for uh, 27 years and turned what at that point was a pretty mediocre program into the greatest college dynasty of all time. And, you know, he labored. And one of the key lessons we learned from Coach Wooden is that good things take time and they should. Uh, Coach Wooden labored for nearly 16 years at UCLA uh, before he won a major championship. And then he went on an unprecedented run, uh, yet to be even equaled or even come close to in college men's basketball when he won 10 national championships in 12 years, won seven in a row, had an 88 game winning streak, had four undefeated seasons. Um, a cast of all Americans recognized as some of the greatest players of all time, but basketball just happened to be the sport he taught. Uh, what he really was, was I think probably the greatest life coach of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, and as he, you know, has grown up life coaching now has become kind of an important part of the, uh, the fabric of America, particularly in business these days, there's a lot of people who offer themselves up as life coaches. Uh, but probably with those people, the first thing you need to do is to take a close look at their life <laughs> and see what that was all about. And that's the story with John Wooden. When you look at his life, the man that he was, his humility, his grace, his uh, his peace, his patience, his kindness. I mean, he was the uh, walking, talking embodiment of the fruits of the spirit, as it's described in, in God's word, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness, and oh, by the way, self-control. Mm. That, was, that was John Wooden. So he was involved in uh, nearly uh, the development of 20 books, most of them in his 80s and 90s, uh, and was teaching and coaching literally right down to his very last year, if not his last couple of months at age 99. So he lived a remarkable century and impacted thousands and thousands of people, literally worldwide, from the you know, from the White House to the outhouse, if you will, <laughs> from the poorest to the most revered, uh, John Wooden has had an influence uh, on on people around the world. You know, Lynn, uh, I, I want to talk about success here with John Wooden's uh, version of success, because I think it embodies his legacy above and above and beyond anything else. It says peace of mind. His John Wooden's success was peace of mind attained only through self-satisfaction and knowing he made the effort to do the best of which you were capable. That is because it flies in the face of what we traditionally think about success. I know some very, very smart people, as I know you do, genius people. And it seems to come down to money, power, and prestige is how they evaluate success. They tend to do it on a scoreboard. That was not John Wooden's view of success, was it? No, it wasn't. But as you, as you describe what success may or may not be, that same debate that you just laid out there, whether success is in a way that Coach Wooden defines it, or is success, you basically gave the classic definition of Webster's uh, in, dictionary of what success is that goes back to something Coach Wooden and his classmates were looking at. Uh, this would probably be in 1926. <laughs> that success is the accumulation of material possessions or the attainment of a position of power and prestige. Right. I mean, early on, that was the debate in his class in high school as to what real success was. And his, uh, his English, uh, English teacher seemed to indicate to him that success was different and there were other things. And that's really, there were a whole series of things that contributed 
uh, to Coach Wooden's understanding, not only understanding, but acceptance and then commitment to that definition of success his whole life. A couple of simple things I think uh, to share with your audience. There was a wonderful little poem called At God's Footstool that was a reference to success. At God's footstool to confess, a poor soul knelt and bowed his head. I failed, he cried. The master said, thou didst thy best. That is success. That was a poem John Wooden saw hanging in a barber shop. <laughs> and it's interesting to think about why it might have been and how it got there, uh, but that had a huge influence on him. When his dad told him, never try to be better than someone else, but never cease to be the best that you can be, that influenced his understanding of success. And um, this, this really became a, a lifelong pursuit of uh, this clear definition of success. And then, oh, by the way, 14 years worth of work to try to define from a day-to-day -day behavioral standpoint how that success that he defined could be accomplished. And this, uh, to me, is one of the most remarkable things about John Wooden. You know, ch sort of we challenge your audience to think about the best idea you've ever had, okay? Now we want you to go to work on it for 14 years, right? <laughs> and then, oh, by the way, we want you to capture it and display it on one page, right? And then, oh, by the way, you're going to live on, you're going to live by it for the next seven decades. <laughs> I mean, that's an unbelievable set of stories and circumstances and commitment. And it is why, in my belief, that John Wooden's Pyramid of Success is the single foundationally strong model of human set success behavior that's ever been developed. You know, it's a, it's a, I, listen, I printed it out and, and that you blew it up so I could look at it in a little bit more detail. And it's, it's one of the most powerful things I've ever seen. And I, I don't know, I don't know. Do you think, do you think it would be wise here that we kind of maybe talk about the pyramid? Maybe this is a good point for us to kind of talk about it and maybe do a quick walkthrough, um, you know, or maybe kind of mention, how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I think so, Jay. Really, I, you know, I see the backdrop of your uh, of your show and the words "new direction" uh, catch my eye, and the word "coaching" uh, catches my eye, and the word uh, "what is it?" No suits, no bull, just results. <laughs> Nothing could be more consistent with the idea of what the pyramid of success is all about, because most people, if they're going in the wrong direction and they need a new direction, it's likely because of what they're processing day-to-day -day in their mind and what's happening day-to-day -day as a result of their behavior. So having a blueprint like the pyramid of success for day-to-day -day behavior is an absolute lifesaver and life transformer. And everything on Coach Wooden's pyramid you know, which is designed to create that idea of true success. Uh, people, everybody on the planet ought to have the pyramid of success memorized right. and be able to run that tape every day in their head. You know, first of all, the pyramid is powerful. Uh, I was surprised that, that, you know, for instance, we'll talk about some of the elements within it um, here in a little bit, but I was, I was so powerful for me how he constructed the foundation and then the second tier and as we move up and then we've got the mortar to hold it all together on the outside. And, you know, I was, I was like, my gosh, what, <laughs> 14 years, I get it. I mean, it's been well thought out. I mean, yes, the, whole, yes. the thing has been so well thought out. I mean, he had, I mean, he just had this whole thing so well thought out and, was, and it's beautiful. And you know, here, here's the other thing. We'll get to the pyramid, and but but I want to but I want to talk about this real quickly here. He believed this pyramid was really about his teaching because he believed in teaching others to win by setting a standard higher than winning, is what you say in the book. And it says, and you said, and I'm going to quote you: "To him, there was no greater joy than living a life and being involved in the work that benefited other people." Yeah, um, yeah that, that, that was primarily a life philosophy that he took from his mentors. Mm. Uh, and, and that was a philosophy that he basically took from Mother Teresa. Mm. Uh, and he read everything that was ever written about her 
and every book by her. He was a great student. Uh, he had mentors himself, none of whom, uh, most of whom, it was the Abraham Lincolns and the Mother Teresas of the world, where he did his homework right. <laughs> on what life and serving uh, was was all about. So no question about that. His name is Lynn Guerin. The book is called Coach Him Way Up, and you're listening to him here on a new direction. Folks, <clears throat> love Epic Physical Therapy, right? One of my sponsors. Whether you're recovering from an injury or surgery, maybe you're suffering everyday aches and pains. Look, I'm getting older. I'm suffering everyday aches and pains. I get it. But you know what? Maybe, you know, and I still like to perform my athletic activities. You know what? They work with professional athletes. They work with, you know, aspiring athletes, right? And they even work with old athletes. And I don't know how athletic I really was, but they work with people like me to get me back to doing the things I need to do and want to do in terms of my physical exercise. Look, the Epic, the Epic PT team, they are fantastic. They will provide you with a customized treatment plan that is tailored to you and you alone. With their, with their experience in rehabbing uh, young athletes, professional athletes, look, they understand the need to treat the entire body as a functional whole, not just the symptoms or the injury. So when you're ready for your Epic relief, when you're ready for your Epic recovery, when you're ready for your Epic results, don't look any further. Start with EpicPT.com. That's E P I C. PT.com and Linda Craft and Team Realtors. You know what? For over 35 years, they've been serving the world and helping people with their real estate needs. And you know, the reason why she's been able to stay at the top of her game for over 35 years is because she understands the power of relationships. She understood that, you know, it really wasn't about business, it's about people. And that if you develop relationships with people and you're sincere, right, then you take care of them, everything else takes care of itself. And that's what she has done with her team. They understand that the very most important part of the real estate transaction is the people. So when you're ready to buy or sell your home, go with people who are going to get to know people and people like you. Go to Linda Craft and Team Realtors. It's real simple. Just go to lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And we're back here on A New Direction with uh, Lynn Guerin and his book, Coach Him Way Up, and also co-written with Jason uh, Lavin and Jim Eber. <clears throat> I need to mention Jason because uh, it, Jason was going to be doing the show and we had a little bit of a conflict. It was all good. And, and Lynn stepped up and um, I'm having a really great time with you. So I want to just say thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying. Uh, I could sit and listen to you all day. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I just wanted to shut up and let you just talk. Um, I want to talk something. I've got it highlighted in red. <clears throat> so this tells me that it was really important to me. It, you said the wooden way won't work unless you commit to coaching yourself first, period. The pyramid of success and the lessons for being follow the same way. Make them work for you and then your team to coach yourself and your team, way, your team as well. You said this is what this book is all about, developing your mindset, attitude, skills as a coach, understanding and, and complete, completing a blueprint for your behavior and developing habits. Talk about that a little bit further because that you made a real impact on me when you wrote that in chapter two um, about that you've got, to, you've got to commit to coaching yourself. Yeah, I think, uh, Jane, hopefully that's a heartfelt response because what really mattered uh, uh, in this whole process that I'm probably the last guy on the planet that should have had the opportunity to work with John Wooden and to be talking to people about coaching their life. <laughs> you know, probably if you're going to learn, uh, learn to, to quit drinking, you probably ought to talk to somebody who drank a lot and was able to quit. <laughs> so, uh, so that idea of, of coaching yourself uh, has been a lifetime uh, challenge for me, uh, goes back a long way. And, and for many people, the question is, you know, where does, your, where does anybody's initial coaching come from? Uh, John Wooden was very lucky to have uh, two wonderful parents at a time when parenting mattered. Uh, he had played for great coaches, learned from great coaches, and paid attention to those lessons. Um, I, I grew up uh, in a small town in Northern Ohio, uh, basically in a broken family. My dad left when I was early, uh, three years old, and come to find out his dad had left and his dad had left. And we hadn't had dad co dad's coaching sons in our family for a hundred years. Uh, and one of my goals was to break that chain. One of my life goals was to break that chain with my own sons. And thank God I've been able to do that. But I was lucky enough uh, to have 
some very good coaches in the sports crazy little small town I grew up with. Uh, not just coaches, but the kind of coaches that John Wooden was, men who were teachers, uh, men who were faithful, uh, men that you could respect, uh, men of integrity, uh, men who loved you and challenged you and uh, helped you be better than you thought you could be. And so it, 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 was, it was really clear, but all of those lessons and all of those great coaches that can come into your life uh, you know, don't make any difference if you're not paying attention to it and first applying it to your own life. Uh, you really got to take a hold of the notion of coaching, being your own head coach, mm -hmm. giving yourself a promotion, if you will, <laughs> to a position of head coach in your life and taking the responsibility to make your life the best it can be, realizing the, the God-given purpose that you have for your life. And I that's a blessing that we all have, knowing God doesn't make any junk, right? We were all made in, in his image. Uh, we all have an opportunity to do special things for special reasons in special ways and to help people do the same. And, you know, most of, uh, I believe that most of our success in life is going to come from our ability to coach ourselves. But our real joy in life is going to come from the ability and the opportunity to help others realize their potential. So, uh, and Coach Wooden was, was a great example of that. First and foremost, you had the impression, not just the impression, but had the evidence and the proof of how well he coached himself. Every one of those blocks on the pyramid of success was the day-to-day -day blueprint for his behavior. He took it dead serious the seven point creed that his father gave him when he was uh, 12 or 13 years old was something he looked at every day of his life right up to his 99th year. He took those things seriously and used them to first focus on coaching himself. Really critical. And, and some of us, many of us, most of us are not very good at that. It's very hard. No, it's it well because you know you you say it. As a matter of fact, in chapter three, you say it starts with the character, right? With our character, it all starts with character. Well, but then you got to say, where's your character start? <laughs> wait, wait, right, 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 right. How, right, how right. do you get good character, or how do you understand? And, and this is a making reference to myself. I looked myself in the mirror early in my life and said, "This is more of a character than a guy who's got character." <laughs> Right. And I was a lot more interested um, uh, in um, a lot more interested in my own success than I was about the success of others. I was a lot more um, I, was, I was a lot more focused on being interesting than I was being interested in others. Uh, and, you know, I think part of that was, you know, the abandoned kid and mom's too busy and you're trying to figure out life and you grow up often in a very you know, kids are born pretty selfish. Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. we all are, right? Yeah. And and so you spend a lifetime trying to, the biggest challenge you have in your life is getting over yourself. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's what, uh, I don't think John Wooden was very, ever very much into himself. Uh, he always had this fundamental, these fundamental ideas of balance, uh, probably because of the way he was raised in his family and what he did. Uh, but it's so critical to, to focus on coaching yourself. He had two sets of threes that, that Joshua gave him, his dad, that, um, I, they're, you know, they're not, they're, they're not extraordinarily, um, <clears throat> I don't think they're anything, you know, it's not like something unique, but they, they impacted him enough that these two sets of threes that he had, the first set being never lie, never cheat, never steal, right? That was important. And then the second was how you handle adversity in difficult situations. And I'm a firm believer in these as well. Don't, don't whine, don't complain, don't make excuses. Um, and he was particularly, um, it seemed, particularly focused on whining. <laughs> that He found it to be, uh, I think he may have used the word cancerous, um, destructive, were some of the words he used when it came to whining because it shifted the focus from the solution to the problem 
stalled the momentum and then required additional effort to get back on the right track. Those were powerful and, he, and his dad gave him those. Yeah, those two sets of threes, I think, uh, you know, connect me, uh, Jado, a, a couple of words when you think about these key ideas and these key fundamentals of Coach Wood. And a lot of things that you read about him and him sounds very simple, mm. right? right? Very basic, Try maybe doing. even corny. <laughs> but with all of these things, you got to think simple, but deep, right? Simple, but solid. And right. coach always had a way of asking the right questions about those kinds of things. As an example, when you think uh, all, all of the problems we have in our, our culture connected to just basic honesty. So don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Does that sound corny? Oh, that sounds corny. But the question is, what would the world look like? feel like, act like, and be like if people didn't lie, cheat, and steal. Okay? <laughs> what, <clears throat> boy, we would be living in a way different world, wouldn't we? We would be living in a way, di way different world. Don't whine, don't complain, don't make excuses. The idea of dealing, how, 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 do, how would that connect? If over the last 30 years, we had a culture that was really focused on not whining, not complaining, and not making excuses, how differently prepared would we have been to go through the pandemic we're going through? Okay. A powerful question Coach Wooden asks is when you consider something like the two sets of threes, who do you become if those are the principles you follow? Who do you become if you don't lie, you don't cheat, and you don't steal? What kind of person are you uh, if you don't whine, if you don't complain, if you don't make excuses? You know, the, the final part of that uh, two sets of threes, don't whine, don't complain, don't make excuses that his father taught him was just do the best you can and be happy and pleased with that. Also knowing the opportunity, you got a chance tomorrow to do it a little better. And that's how he lived his life every day of it. Why don't we live like this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, I'm like, I think to myself, because he lived so intentionally, right? I mean, it seemed like everything that I read in this book was that he was so intentional about everything he did. I mean, he, he was, I want to say he was a master of discipline. And I, I don't mean that in a bad way, but he was, you know, I, I may be disciplined in some things, but he seemed like he was disciplined in everything he did. Well, you know, um, Jay, the, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the word discipline because I think in, in our culture and in our families, discipline comes off as a negative word and a bad word. Absolutely. In John Wooden's world, discipline uh, was a very positive word. And I'm, I'm going to give you four connections to the idea of discipline. You know, you discipline to help, to correct, to teach, and to improve. You discipline to help, to correct, to teach, to improve. How can that be possibly negative? <laughs> Someone who is giving you discipline, who is doing it to help you, to correct you, to teach you and to improve you. You know, um, the Bible clearly says that God disciplines those he loves. Uh, John Wooden's block on the pyramid of self-control, self-control is connected to self-discipline, right? And if we don't have and we don't uh, automatically take on those, those behaviors as a child. Children aren't born with self-discipline. Children have to be taught self-discipline. And as coach would say, most of the important values are caught, not taught. So when, when a child looks around, where do they see self-discipline? Where do they experience self-discipline? Um, so th these concepts, uh, uh, and when you say he was an int intentional, it was part of the things he had around him, like the two sets of threes and the pyramid of success and his seven point creed that helped remind him what he was trying to be intentional about. He had this solid base of foundations and fundamentals that guided his life. That's why uh, in the curriculum we teach our first course starts with the idea of foundations and fundamentals. It's got to start from the inside. Uh, and, and that's where we start because that's how John Wooden became 
when I first started working with Coach Wooden, that was the first question I asked him. And his answer to that shaped 20 years of work. The question was, Coach Wooden, how did you do what you did? And how did you become who you are? And the story he began to tell me and the way he outlined it ultimately became the, the outline for the curriculum that we teach. So let's talk about the seven foundations and fundamentals. You feel like you feel like we can do that? I think we can. I, we can yeah, I think we. Yeah, I think we can go that. I think we should. I think we should talk about that because I think. Uh, by the way, before you do that, why don't you tell people that they can they could do this assessment? Tell them where they could find the assessment. Yeah, if they go to the John R. Wooden Course uh, dot com, mm -hmm. that's where they can uh, find the assessment. And uh, there's actually a, a code in the book, Coach Fifty. Uh, yeah. And they can get um, literally a 50% discount on it. And uh, they, they just take it right online. Uh, they get an opportunity to get a 30 day uh, playbook. Yep. Uh, uh, and work through that, uh, that playbook over a 30 day period and put, put in place, apply all of these things that are in the, uh, in the assessment. So, but, so before, you, before you go on, let me just, let me just tell listeners here, listen, I have, I do a write up. It's a blog post that's associated with the show. That is wherever you listen to the show. Uh, if you will go and I will have uh, the link to the John R. Wooden uh, course.com. I will also have, um, you know, we'll do coach 50. I will be on that blog post and um, you know, so that people can download it. I've done it uh, folks. I just want to tell you that I've done this, this assessment and it, I did it twice because I felt like the first time I was lying to myself, which, which, you know, which we call on the show denial. Denial is an acronym for don't even know I am lying. And so I felt like I was in pretty good denial. And so I felt like I needed to do it again. I love uh, that acrostic, uh, your acronym there, denial. That's a great one. Well, we have to give my wife credit for that. Okay. So yeah, we have to give her credit for that because um, yeah, because she was the one, she's got a bunch of them and they're awesome. Um, and so I, I appreciate that she shares those with me and then lets me use them. And then sometimes I claim them as my own wrongly. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so I was in denial, but I just want to tell you that doing it twice, even for me was very powerful. You get a PDF, um, you know, that evaluates where you're at percentage wise. And so um, I think it's really, really, I really, really encourage you to just go to John R. Wooden course.com, go ahead and get the assessment, do it, it's coach 50, 50% um, off. It's, it's really, really, really powerful. I can't, I well, can't. What makes it so powerful is it's about behavior. And the question with behavior is how often do you exhibit the right, right behavior? That's right. really the test. It's not, do I believe this should be done or that should <laughs> be done? The question is how much is it a part of my day-to-day -day behavior? Everyone is an example of industriousness is all about hard work. Is there anybody that thinks they don't work hard? Right. <laughs> yeah, well, what percentage of the time do you work? Hard? Yes. Yes. Right? That's, yeah. that's the, that's the, that's the, that was the question that, you know, I had to reevaluate, right? Yeah. Yes. If I'm being honest with myself, what percentage of my time is working hard? And, right? and the other key concept is how much of what you think your weight, you're spending your effort on is actually productive, right? No activity right. without achievement. Right. Uh, so much of our time and energy gets wasted on things that are not productive. Yeah, we, yeah we get, I didn't mean to get off track if you want to go. No, to no, that. no, no, we, we, we're going to do that. But, but okay. you know, because this is a really good point, because being busy does not mean being productive. Just because you're busy doesn't mean that you're being productive. And that, you know, I think sometimes we get caught up to, we don't, we say, oh man, I was, I'm so busy, right? Well, but were you productive? Yes. Right. That's, I mean, that's really the question we have to ask ourselves. Yeah. Right. And because I think coach would make that dis distinction really, really, you know, carefully was, you know, I'm not just doing this to be busy. I'm doing this because there's more, I'm, I'm trying to be productive, not just for myself because he was extraordinarily selfless, but I'm trying to be productive so I can help other people. Uh, he even carried that to the concept of how the game of basketball gets played. Right. There's a lot of basketball players today who are very busy on the floor, but not very productive. Mm. You know, basically uh, showing off, showing people how good they dribble or right. other things, you know, standing in one place and dribbling the ball 
uh, between your legs and faking here and faking there. I mean, that's all busy work. The object is to get towards the goal and get the ball in the basket. Uh, so there's a lot of activity, but not much achievement. That's why actually when he played, if you if that fancy stuff, usually uh, you got a chance to sit on the bench for a while and think about how you were going to make your teammates better. So maybe a little old school, but I think there's a lot to that. I do, uh, I do example, too. Uh, when you watch women's basketball today, there's a lot better fundamental play yeah. and a lot less uh, of the uh, uh, needless activities right. that men do in the game today. And women True. are playing uh, basically a pure form in the game. Not as athletic, of course, but right. playing it better, coach would say. I, I would. I totally agree. It is fundamentally better. Listen, let's do this. Folks, you know what? You're listening. We're going to get back with uh, Lynn Guerin and hear the book, Coach Him Way Up. But we're going to do this first. You're listening to him here on A New Direction. Hey, folks, real quickly, you know what? Epic Physical Therapy, my physical therapist, I use them. I love them. Uh, they're more than just a sponsor. I know them personally. I know Heidi and Andrew. I know so many of the physical therapists are there. They are trained in uh, the most comprehensive cutting edge treatments that are available. They have the best equipment. You know, they've got the, you know, anti-gravity treadmills, the Normatec compression sleeves, the game ready, you know, that I talk about. They do blood flow restriction therapy, dry needling, cupping, all sorts of things. But really what makes them great is because, you know, the people are so good and they really do care about you. They really do. And, you know, it's the reason why professional athletes come from all over the world um, to go to Epic Physical Therapy because they're, they're not only knowledgeable, but they're great people. And that's what makes a difference. Um, they're privately owned. They're not corporately owned. And that makes a difference too. So when you're ready for your epic relief, your epic recovery and epic results, and you want it personal, start with Epic Physical Therapy. You can go to epicpt.com. It's E-P-I-C-P-T.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors. You know, I can't get, I, I, listen, you know what? Real estate is a business transaction. And for most people, it's probably be the largest personal transaction that you have in a lifetime. But beyond the fact that it's such a large transaction, the other thing is, is it takes a lot of emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual energy when you are dealing with selling or buying a home, because there's so much that goes into it. You're part of your future it was, or it may have been part of several memories, right? And Linda understood that from day one. When she started doing this in 1985, when interest rates were 18%, right? She understood that, you know, that, yeah, the interest rates were high, but people, but people had memories in those houses or people were buying a house because that was going to be the future. That was where their kids were going to be raised. And she understood that. And so because she understood the power of what was going to happen in a home, she wanted to be a part of that, which is why for 35 years, she's been at the top of the game. And the reason why she's been top of the game is because she understood people and she understood what was important to people. And then she did, and she did, then it did the business part of it. So listen, when you're ready to sell or buy your home, no matter where you're at in the world, start with Linda Craft and Team Realtors. Just go to lindacraft.com. It's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And we're back here on a new direction. And we are talking to Linda Guerin. The book is called Coach Him Way Up, available bookstores everywhere. We're going to talk about the uh, seven fundamentals real quick here, because I think they're really important. And I, I think we should talk about those, Lynn, because I think those fundamentals kind of are, a, they are fundamental. <laughs> I don't have any other way to phrase that. So let's go ahead to the start. What's number yeah, one? I think you can use the word of fundamental and foundational. Uh, almost yeah. interchangeable. They actually mean uh, pretty much the same thing. And the things that we write in the book about uh, seven foundations uh, that Coach Wooden uh, basically displayed came out of the seven foundations that his dad gave him in the seven point creed. It's interesting how his world revolved around a lot of seven so that the creed were be true to yourself, help others, make each day your masterpiece, drink deeply from good books, especially the Bible, make friendship a fine art, build a shelter against a rainy day. And he was talking about an eternal shelter and pray for guidance and give thanks for your blessings every day. Those were the things with the three point creed that shaped him for a long time that ultimately led him to this, these seven fundamentals that ultimately directed his life. The first one being this notion that the love of wisdom is the highest form of knowledge. 
Mm. And it's a really important idea today with all of the information that's available in all of the media that is bombarding us uh, with information. How much of it is information? How much of it is useful? How much is news? How much is fake news? And where's the wisdom in it all, mm. right? Uh, the quality of your, the output of your life is only as good as the quality of the input into your head. Uh, and today we're absolutely deluged with a lot of information that you can't quite cast as wisdom. Mm -hmm. So he spent a lifetime really trying to understand that concept and to have his thinking reflect uh, true wisdom. And wisdom is that combination of knowledge and experience and perspective that comes together in a very uh, unique way. Mm -hmm. um, the, the second one was this notion of care and consideration uh, for how people are treated. I mean, it really is the rule. Do you treat everybody with a sense of care and a sense of consideration? Uh, you know, I interviewed Coach a lot of times and he was also often asked the question, Coach, how do you want to be remembered? And his answer was always the same. I'd like to be remembered as someone who was considerate of others. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. Came out of this foundation. Um, fairness in everything with everyone. A loyalty to someone and something. Uh, his concept of loyalty and loyalty on the pyramid of success, as I've learned it and studied it for 20 years, has transformed my life as an abandoned son who had no concept of loyalty in his own life, when I understood that loyalty was mostly about self-respect, that changed everything for me, mm. Jay. The idea, you know, you know, as a, as, as a kid whose parents, uh, father walked away from, you never stop asking that question, why? Right. I mean, you gotta get over it, you gotta get through it, you gotta get by it, you gotta grow from it. Right. But you may never stop asking that question, why? And I finally understood that ultimately my dad could not have had any respect for himself whatsoever mm. based on these decisions that he made to not raise his children. And mm. I think that's to any, any father listening to this program that isn't connected to their kids. Uh, tomorrow is not too early. Mm. Uh, and it's never too late to do that because your children are still waiting for dad to care, for dad to come, for dad to be there. Right. Nothing more important, particularly in these days. Um, respect for authority. Where's that gone, huh? <laughs> respect <laughs> for authority as a fundamental in Coach Wooden's life. Uh, you know, he expected it, right, as a head coach. Right. But he knew that it, that ultimately it was earned. But being raised with the respect for authority, starting with your own parents, right? The way I hear some kids talking to their parents today, and oh, by the way, the parents yelling, not talking or teaching or coaching their kids, uh, it's no wonder we, we don't have much respect for authority. A coach had this idea of, uh, you know, the importance of purity and 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 propriety, you know, what's right and what's good and what's pure and what's, you know, that's so fundamental and so biblical. And then this really important concept that he wanted to surround everything in his life with love and balance. He said those were the two most important words in the dictionary, love and balance. And he brought those two things to every aspect of his life and his sport and his teaching and his coaching. I think those were the seven yeah. fundamentals um, that that Coach Wooden's life was all about. And those came out of the seven point creed that his father taught him. Uh, by the way, that's th th that's powerful. It, it's so it's so powerful. And and by the way, folks, it's in the book. It's the book's called Coach Him Way Up. Um, it, it's in this book. And by the way, there's worksheets in this book that you, I, I need to make you aware of that you can work through um some of these things uh, almost all of them actually that we've discussed so far on the show uh that's why this book is just uh fantastic um you know you need to get a copy i i really do suggest i suggest that you actually get a uh a, a copy that you can write in or you can so that you can get these because they're 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 fantastic 
um, I, it, they really made me think and really made me think through it really, really carefully. So um, I really highly suggest that you get it's called Coach Him Way Up. It's Lynn Garen and um, Jason Lavin and uh, Jim Eber. Um, beautiful yellow colored, mustard colored cover. You can't miss it. <clears throat> it's, it's fantastic. Um, I want to dig into a little bit here of the pyramid of success. And um, I don't know how far we'll get through it. And I don't know if we really want to get too much into it, but I want to talk about it here because um, I just want to talk about a few of the, the things that stand out to me um, on um, each level, just a few things, not, may, not maybe the whole thing, but just maybe a few things. First of all, I'm, I'm going to read these off and then we'll just pick one. The foundation level is enthusiasm, cooperation, loyalty, friendship, and industriousness. And that makes up the foundation, right? Um, I was very high on enthusiasm. Um, I, I was 100% on enthusiasm. I mean, the other <laughs> one's not so much, but um, I was 100% on the enthusiasm scale. Why were these industriousness, friendship, loyalty, cooperation, enthusiasm, why did that, do you think, made up the foundation for him? Well, it's a great question. And I don't know, I have exactly the answer for it. I, I know, all I know is John Wooden worked on it for 14 years. Uh, <laughs> so he thought through it pretty uh, clearly. And he, uh, uh, he also changed a lot of blocks around, moved things around that 14 year effort. I've been studying it now for 20 years and every day I learned something new from it. Mm. Um, and basically, and he started interestingly, uh, Jay, he started with the first two blocks and it's the concept of cornerstones, right? We right. have to have some cornerstones right. in our life. And Coach says that the cornerstones for success behavior is there's no substitute for hard work and there's no substitute for loving what you do. And when those two things come together, some powerful things can happen. Uh, you have a chance of ultimately working at your highest level of competency. We've all had jobs uh, that we've worked real hard at that we didn't like to do very well. Right. And the, most of the time you can't do that very well for very long. Uh, so it's really important that uh, hard work, uh, and he'll obviously say how hard you work and how well you plan your work and how much you love your work ultimately is gonna be the cornerstones for your success. These next three blocks that represent the foundation, those add others industriousness, enthusiasm, you can do those two things on your own. But friendship, loyalty, and cooperation involve others. Uh, to have a friend, be a friend. Uh, you, you're Everybody has to be loyal to someone and some things. And cooperation, whether it's between two or a hundred, right? It takes being a good listener. Uh, it takes a sense of uh, being interested always in in the best way, not having your own way. And when people begin to embrace those kinds of ideas, they're going to be a lot more cooperative. The mm. thing we don't have time for today, Jay, is to begin to talk about not just explaining the individual blocks themselves, but understanding the relationships between the blocks. Uh, one, one quick example would be, what's the relationship between industriousness and friendship? Wow. Wow. Because they sit right next to each other. They do. Well, why do they sit right next to each other? Let's see if I'm working hard, right? If I'm working hard, I love what I do. I'm, I would say that would have to be with colleagues then, right? That I'm developing relationships with my colleagues and the people I work with. The possibility, I'd ask you the question, is friendship, real friendship, true friendship, hard work? Oh, gosh. Be married. <laughs> So why do you think industriousness and friendship are side by side? Because it takes work. Because it takes work, hard work. And, and uh, it friend, be... Friendship and loyalty side by side. Right, because right. what good is a friendship without loyalty? Yeah, so a couple of, that's just a couple of quick examples. Uh, every one of these uh, blocks wow. tied every other block, both on the side, on the top, under the bottom, and they all work from the bottom up to create these, this competitive greatness idea at the top. That's, That's why I said I've been studying it for 20 years and you never run out of lessons or insights. And there's almost nothing in the work that you do and the relationships you have where you cannot improve them um, or 
fix a problem with them by looking at the relationships on the pyramid of success. Oh my, I, I never saw it until you just pointed out and looking at the pyramid and I'm like going, oh no, I got I to relook at there's little mini, there's many pyramids within the pyramid. There are. Because, because you see the self-control, industriousness and friendship, right? Yeah. And then you see alertness, friendship and loyalty. Then you see initiative, loyalty and cooperation. And you're like going, oh my gosh. And then there's, you know, you get further up, it's team spirit, initiative and intentness. And you're going, well, how about that? Yeah. Right. And wow. <laughs> That's why 20 years later, well, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, uh, Angela Duckworth wrote a book called Grit, right? Yeah. You probably heard of it. Grit yep. uh, sold millions of copies. She became a very rich young lady, a very expensive speaker. And that's just one block on the pyramid that is intentness. Intentness yeah. is grit. So when you look at the research that she put into just that one block and ultimately what it produced, if we really understood the pyramid for everything it represents, it would change the face of human behavior. It would change our school systems overnight. Lynn, we've been on an hour. It has gone <laughs> so fast. I did. It, I, I, I enjoyed you on the show so much. I would love to bring you back sometime. Hey, I'd love to do it. Love to do uh, it. And listen, so the show is called A New Direction because we try to help people find a new direction in their life, career, business, success, and leadership. You've done that today, but if you could leave them with just a short little uh, new direction, what would it be for them? Um, you know, I think I, I would have people think about their thinking. Uh, and think about that, you know, there is good thinking and there is great thinking and there is God thinking. Mm. And they need to make sure they have a very good balance of all three in their life. That's awesome. His name's Lynn Guerin. The book is entitled Coach Him Way Up, right? And listen, you know what I say to you every week, folks, you know what it is, right? Be inspired. Because when you're inspired, that means you'll inspire others. And then in turn, they'll get inspired and they'll inspire other people that can make this world a great place. Be back here next week with another great guest. It's going to be another great book and it's going to be another great show. As I say to you every week, ciao, everybody. <laughs>